What's up, everyone? It's Mark from 403 Fauna, along with Jason, Radass Designs. Thank you for joining us this week. Today, we've got a subject that I really want to dive into on controversial ball python names and morphs. And we'll be looking at a few of those. And Jason just told me he's he's really good at doing his research. And it kind of reminded me of how Justin just had an article published in the New Yorker or New York Post, one of those magazines. And he was talking about how the, re the reporter did so much research into him and everyone else. And it just kind of reminded of me of you in your research for these <laughs> different names. <laughs> Yeah, I, I read that. Um, Antoine had posted a link to it, I think on Facebook. And um, I thought, well, I'll just click on this real quick and it'll be a short few paragraphs or whatever. And it, I mean, I don't even think I got to the last paragraph. It was so like uh, amazingly comprehensive and informative. And like, I was like, wow this is a good article <laughs> and i really enjoyed reading it and um yeah that some people are really good at that i haven't read it yet i i would like to get a physical copy of that i'm not sure if they still do physical copies but that might be a future show subject we might touch on but we'll see yeah well let's bring up our powerpoint here and get our show started Okay, so controversial ball python names. We're the fauna topic, by the way, TFT. Glad for you to join us. Now let's do our weekly check-in. Jason, start off with you. How was your week with regards to ball pythons? It was a long week for me in general. <laughs> wow, wow. But like, um, let's see, ball python related. I had um, one snake pass away. That was uh, an important snake in a beautiful snake and that was obviously like really sad uh couldn't figure out exactly what it could be i mean i have another snake with the exact genes and the exact setup with the exact substrates and the exact amount of clean water and food items <laughs> you know sometimes not um if you do do this hobby long enough whether you you know, it's more professional level, like you work at a zoo or you run a pet store or you have a giant collection. Like, even if you do your very, very best, sometimes animals die. It's it's the cycle of life and not everything is meant to uh, live a full long life. And so I'm not exactly what sure happened. I don't plan on doing like a necropsy or uh, like a NIDO test or anything like that. I'm not worried about that, but um, yeah, that was sad. Yeah. Um, one of my biggest clutches the past season was some triple hat, some triple hat clown, VPI, Xanthic, genetic stripe. And I hatched 1.6. And for whatever reason, I lost that male. So now I'm left with all these females and not a male to go with them. So that's <laughs> kind of making me change my plans this season because I didn't want to do that pairing again, but I might have to just to get that male. But of course I could go on to Morph Market and possibly get a triple head male. I know Justin's got some, but he's got other genes in there with that makes the snake t over $10,000 or so. Right. I don't think I'm going that route. But right. this week for me, I, I did a lot of pairings and got locks on most of them. In fact, my pastel blade lace clown, which is supposed to be my big hitter this season, that has been a dud so far. He finally locked with a, a mystic clown female. So I'm excited nice. for that. I did not get my, oh, good. Well, I, I was just going to say, I knew he would come around. <laughs> the male that was the first male that I bought for my collection, I mentioned before, he was almost two years old. Um, and then I started pairing them and, and even though all the snakes got along and they would even cuddle a little bit and in theory he could have locked, but I don't believe he did. Some are just a little bit slower to get going. And, um, 
that snake that you got is really cool <laughs> and i knew eventually he would uh get the hang of it sometimes it takes him a little bit so i've got just one last young male that i would really like to go it's a uh, spot nose leopard vpi xanthic 66 percent possible hit clown i put him in he's still not showing activity i might shut him down because he stopped eating and he is a, a really young male so i'll probably just shut him down and just get him ready for next season yeah okay so let's take a look at our shout out of the week and that was da -da 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 -da, genomic labs so jason he was one of the first guys to reach out to me when i started and he's he was watching my youtube and he asked me if i had a morph market that was really cool and i know he's a, a big supporter of all the lives i yeah. sent him a message because i saw this video this picture of him i was watching videos back during the pandemic times and i was like hey that's the guy that messaged me jason and this was from clutch x video and someday i'd like to touch on COVID breeders and just the memories that we had during that time of COVID. And a lot of the people who created those videos during that time aren't around anymore. But Jason appeared in that video. That was the first time I saw him. He He's a SoCal guy like us. And he answered correctly last week's problem of the week. He so did. if you answer the problem of the week correctly, you will be eligible for a drawing of a snake that I'll be giving away. So far, we have Hivis pythons. Charlie from Grey Rider Reptiles and Jason from Genomic Labs. So they're not too difficult questions if you are into the ball python game. So I'll pull that up next. But big shout out to Jason of Genomic Labs. Have you met him yet? No, I've I've seen him commenting and I've interacted with him a tiny bit in some other podcasts and like uh, in the, in the chats. And it, and he seems like good vibes and. Um, you know, eventually with all the shows that we'll have coming up this year, I'm sure we'll network a little bit better. <laughs> there he is. And and a lot of us uh, who haven't met in person will we'll get to meet. So that'll be pretty cool. I, I do look forward to meeting him among other SoCal breeders. Yeah. We got a plan for either Anaheim or Pomona and just have a big meetup and or maybe both just to meet in person, even though I've met you in person already, but I haven't met Jason yet. That should be fun. Yeah. Okay, so let's pull out this week's problem of the week. And you will, if you answer it correctly, you'll be eligible for a free snake giveaway. And I'm planning on it being a banger. I don't want to just give away a random snake. I just want to get rid of out of my rack. It's going to be something like Het Monsoon or something like that. No guarantees, but it's going to be something really nice. So our problem of the week, by the way, if you won already, then um, you're not eligible to, to win again. Feel free to answer in the, in the questions, but the first person who hasn't won yet that answers correctly will be eligible and we'll get the shout out for next week. So here is our problem of the week. What's the easiest way for a new ball python breeder to find information on breeding ball pythons? A, visit the Marks Jane website on ball python breeding. B, Watch Chris Hardwick on YouTube. C, call Miguel if you can get him on the line. Yeah, good luck. Or D, wing it. Breeding ball pythons is a breeze. <laughs> first, first person who answers that correctly in the chat will get that shout out of the week. Any comments on any of these without giving the answer? Um, I like Chris Hardwick. I'll just say that. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's, he's a fun guy. Um, and Miguel, I still haven't gotten a hold of, um, not that I've tried a bunch ringing him late at night, but, um, he, he is notoriously challenging to get on the phone. Yeah, that's, that's what I've heard. I've, I was on his Patreon one day. We're going to have a Patreon show and, but I did not try to contact him. I know he's really tough to get a hold of, but it looks like we got Patricia Cooper from gas reptile. She oh, is going to yeah. get our shout out for next week. Nice. And Patricia, is that your Instagram there, Gas Reptile? I'll get I'll get a hold of you and just get some pictures and stuff. But you're eligible. Congratulations. Shout out of the week for you next week. <laughs> I believe that is her IG. And uh, and if you do go and check out the Marcus Jane website, there's tons of information on there. I remember when I was 
um, looking for signs of ovulation uh, somehow through research brought me to his site and it and it was uh, it was helpful okay so let's bring out your red ass snake of the week <laughs> what you got <laughs> dun, 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 dun. okay give me a second here okay guys in the chat try to guess what jeans those are while i pull them up solo here So what do we got here? We got looks like there's I see speckles. That's so got to be banana. Patricia says banana, champagne, het pied. I was gonna say pied, but you know those champagnes, just the het form can make them look like pieds. Yeah, I've seen some that totally look like pieds. Um, this was just a, a simpler one this week we're going to have on topic um, coral glow versus banana and among other things. And so I thought, well, I'd grab yet another banana that I have. And she is good to breed. Has she but been I, locked yet? Well, from that collection that I had gotten, there were some extra snakes and I had a, um, I had to liquidate a little bit. It was just so much. I had like, I don't know, 85 ball pythons or something suddenly. And so I, I devised a trade for another species that I, I really wanted. Um, I used to work with rosy boas. They're pretty much my favorite snake ever. And uh, so I traded like 10 or 11 ball pythons, some that I didn't really want to get rid of and some that were expendable and um, made sense. Um, and there was in that collection a banana clown male. I didn't really know anything else about him other than he was really pretty. He might have, I don't think he had fire, but he might have had fire. He probably had pastel. He was really, really bright and really good size and really healthy. And I, uh, right before I sent all those snakes to Florida, right before like the window was closing, for winter it was starting to get really cold. I um, put him in with her once she had, she had been here, I don't know, a couple months or something. Um, and I got her eating good. And I was like, well, let me just see. I don't have anything else planned to put to her. Let me just, let me just see how they react. And I put him in there for four and a half days and I didn't see any locks, but I just decided, well, you know, I, then I sent him off. I'll just, I'll just feed her and see how she acts and just not pair anything else to her just in case I got a banana clown to a banana pied. That would be pretty cool. Um, so Definitely. she'll either develop or, or she'll just get bigger <laughs> and, I'll and I'll find out later. So I'm just keeping her, keeping her chilled out and fed till then. Um, yeah, she's pretty cool though. Good eater. Her and uh, the other regular piebald I have, they're just they're just monster eaters. They'll eat like among the bigger rats that you'll you'll have, and um, so she's pretty pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Sure. So now we are going to look at. First page on Morph Market Auction. This segment's called Page One. And if any of you are anime fans, that's a One Piece character right there. I'm an anime fan. But I got to share with you that I did bid on my first snake this week. And that was really fun, even though I did not win the snake. There was a certain price point that I, I had in mind. And once that price point was hit, it was like, you know, I'm not going to go over that. I'm going to let that guy have it. But it's crazy how they got these $5 bids. And the guy, he must have been like an expert player at bidding because he would wait till like five seconds and then put his bid up and it would only be $5 increments. And it got a little frustrating on my part. And I was like, you know, what? I'm going to let him have it. 
<laughs> He's probably used to sniping. <laughs> yeah. So let's take a look at page one of auctions. I'm just going to refresh it real quick. And let's see if there's anything on here that maybe you'd like. I just like looking at the prices. It's funny how since these auctions started, it's like the first thing I look at are these auctions. I don't know about you, but. Well, like one thing I've been curious about is, you know, I'll, I'll watch a lot of them just out of curiosity and seeing what the market trends are and, and what happens for, for people in certain gene combos. And, and um, if you go to do something else, you make a snack or you check something else out on your phone on another tab and then you come back to it and it's too late. Like you won't see what the final auction bid is unless it's just like right that second. So it'll just click to like automatically to hold, which is cool that it puts the snake um, on hold automatically now. It didn't do that in the beginning weeks. Um, but uh, unless there's something that I haven't looked deep enough into with like say the sales, um, and it's showing the actual sales price if you research, um, you know, what, what recent things have sold. Like it just goes back to whatever it's previously listed mm -hmm. price was. So, um, yeah, there's a couple snakes that I've been curious about or I watched and, um, and then they didn't, you know, their reserve wasn't met. And then I go back and I look at the snake that I have saved and it'll say like $900. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what what did it go for and um and i don't know <laughs> this one right here that interests me uh yellow belly clown het hypo het pied possible od now this is from kyle hoffman royal ambassador reptiles in fact after i lost that auction bidding war i actually looked on morph market for something similar and I saved one of the snakes from Kyle Hoffman here, not this particular one, but I'll definitely be keeping my eye on that one. And maybe next payday, if I'm still into that, go for that one. But this one interests interest me right here. That's I am pretty. in the, the clown hypo project. In fact, one of my young males has been a stud this season and it's a hypo clown and has been going to some of the females here. Anything on here that interests you? Um, earlier this morning, there was, a, I mean, I wasn't prepared to, you know, bid on a snake today um, with my finances currently. Um, but there was a Pastave, 50% uh, Het VPI Exanthic, 100% Het Puzzle female, like a, a juvenile. And um it went for 305 310 something like that and i was like oh that that was a pretty good deal <laughs> sometimes it's timing um that was a cool cool snake you know you have a you could do a shed test for a vpi and um that would be cool to have like you know down the line um make a an exanthic Mojave puzzle <laughs> uh, right. crossing my fingers for uh, hypothetically for that person. Well, Patricia, if you got the spot nose clown head desert ghost, I shake my fist at you. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats if that was you <laughs> with your $5 increments that frustrated me. <laughs> but hey, you know what? I'm working the exanthic puzzle project, so. Maybe I'll have I something know. for you. Maybe I that'll be one of my giveaway snakes this year. Who knows? I thought for sure that Exanthic that you hit with the crazy jumbled up pattern. I was like, oh my God, he did it. He did it. And uh, and then it wasn't a puzzle, but man, it has got to be het because it 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 almost looks like a puzzle other than the eye stripes, you know, being so bold. It's It's a wild looking snake. Super cool. And he tries to bite my face off every time I pick him up. So hopefully it's a good sign. <laughs> well, then he's definitely <laughs> het puzzle. <laughs> okay, let's get to the meat of our show today, which is the controversial ball python names and morphs. And, you know, I don't want to rub anybody the wrong way here.
So here's the wonderful TFT. We've got to come up with some sort of logo here. Maybe Holly can do something for us. Yeah, I saw she was in the chat. Um, Holly's Holly's awesome. She's a lot of fun. Uh, I got to hang out with her uh, at Pomona. And, yeah, I missed uh, you, Holly, at Pomona. I I did run into Sammy, but missed you. Yeah, and she's been she's been uh, grinding away on her podcasts and uh, and and all her uh, designs, uh, helping people with logos and and various things. Been uh, pretty pretty cool. It takes a it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to do all that designing and uh, and be on that grind. So pretty cool. And congrats yeah, on the first clutch too, Holly. Yeah, she got some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's look into our first one. Of course, it's a classic. I just want to start us off slow, but banana versus coral glow. Now, I got to tell you, when these first came out, I was I was big into ball pythons back then. In fact, on my Instagram, if you scroll down far enough, you'll see that in the 2013 Anaheim show, I took a picture of a cinnamon banana or coral glow, whatever it was, for thirty thousand dollars. And I got to tell you, back then. I prefer the coral glow name. It sounds cooler, but banana is very descriptive. And if you think about it, as they get older, they get these spots and it looks like a ripening banana. And I think they're both great names for the morph. It seems like banana is more popular. Which one do you prefer on that one? I prefer banana. I just, a banana is a cutesy name and it fits with how they go through a, a transition um and how they get spotted or usually get spotted um sometimes heavily so um coral glows a, a cool name there's a lot of morphs and different species of different reptiles that are, are called you know coral um or glow um one thing that i've noticed that's a little bit different is um is that sometimes with coral glow line of uh of essentially bananas they they will get like little maroon spotting on them so just like the black flecking they'll get like maroonish flecking as well it's something that's comparable uh to crested geckos some of the dalmatian crested geckos even way back in, in the day late 90s and early 2000s you would see them the Dalmatians uh, would were considered not very desirable back then, but some of them would have like little maroon flecking on them, and some of them would just have black flecking and brown flecking. And uh, if you were to ask uh, Garrick DeMeyer um, of Royal Constrictor Designs, he works a lot with with coral glow primarily, and he would um, he's had he's had discussions about that and mentioned it in some of his videos in the past. So there's like some subtle differences from the two imported uh, bananas, um, but otherwise they're they're essentially the same. So I, I today I, I found out what the topics were last night, right, Marks? But I didn't really start researching stuff till this morning. So I go into all these old like ballpython.net, like, um, forums and discussions, people getting in arguments, saying <laughs> that they're not the same and all this stuff back from like, you know, 2011, 2012 and, and stuff. So I'm going through all this stuff. I'm going through all this stuff. And, and, um, you know, they basically what it comes down to is, is they're, they're the same and, um, they, they breed the same way. They have the same traits in the sense that, um, you know, with the, the chromosome issues that they have um, and the sex linked um, dynamics. Um, so, you know, some people would prefer they pick the name. So many bananas and coral glows have been marketed from, you know, a different, um, you know, a different naming that they're, they're all getting kind of muddied anyways, in a sense. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're the same. I have so. a question for you. Um, I know that if, let's say that we have a male maker banana, mm -hmm. 
like it's like 99% of the bananas will be male, right? But there's a small percentage that they'll be female. Yeah, something happens with with the chromosomes. Uh, I mean, I'm not a geneticist. Uh, I'm not that big of a nerd on it, but I have read enough to where there's there's like a jump. It like skips across it, it genetically where all of a sudden the the it doesn't be what it was supposed to be. Like essentially a male maker should just always make males. And and if that was the case, there would be no <laughs> female bananas or coral glows in the hobby. And and that would just be the way that it stayed, unless another one was found in, in the in the wild and 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 hatched out as a female. But it it eventually skipped and and popped out a female. I've heard people say that it's 99%. I've heard people say it's 97% based off of uh, like data. I've heard some people say 90% or even less, but it it's something uh, around that, you know. Like we mentioned Chris Hardwick earlier. He's he's hatched about 100 bananas and he had <laughs> one female. <laughs> Wow. So it's it's comparable to something like that, um, numbers wise. But um, it it happens. You can't rely on it uh, being one way or the other. But the one that I hatched uh, this this summer, when I got those eggs with the incubator, and uh, I was wondering, hmm, I wonder if it's a male or not. <laughs> I pretty much knew that it most likely was, and and sure enough, I. You know, it, it, it proved to be a, a, a boy. So um, this one, she'll she'll pop out boys and girls, and the boys will be male makers. In fact, pretty much all of my bananas, except for one, are like that. So I'll I'll have lots of male makers and um, and female bananas and super bananas uh, this year. It, there's only one banana I have that I don't know exactly. And if that one banana clown bred to her, then I, I don't know what his story is either. So I'll just have to breed him out and find out in the in the long run. It also gets complicated when you breed male makers um, and create um, super bananas. So from what I can tell with the super bananas that you make, whether they came from females or whether they came from males it flip-flops so you'll think that a certain thing is going to happen but it's actually the reverse so you'll either make a male super banana or you'll make a female super banana based on what created it and then what it gives off is, <laughs> is a little bit confusing too uh using a a, a Punit Square, it would it, it could be maybe less confusing, but it's a it's a bit of work. But it, it's it's a really interesting quirk about coral glows and bananas that you won't really find with other species. There there are some other reptiles that have some interesting quirks about making just males, um, and then when there's uh, partho babies, they tend to pretty much just always be females there there are certain weird little things in in the in the reptile world um and then there's temperature sex determination which some people still to this day dispute but every single leopard gecko that i hatched in 99 and 2000 and 2001 were <laughs> like incubated super super high almost at unsafe levels and every single one of those leopard geckos was beautiful and bright and male <laughs> so which species do it is still a little bit debated but um you'll you'll see that a bit with uh with geckos and some other reptiles correct one more question on the banana thing here now i hatched one of my clutches was of six and six were bananas and one was a a black pastel and the bananas were all female and i would have expected the black pastel to be a male but as many times as i popped them it turned out a female have you heard of um let's say female makers popping out males that are not bananas or 
Yeah, I mean, and I mean, you'll want to double check that snake and triple check that snake, you know, gently, but th it's the same thing that's happening in reverse. So that chromosome is flip flip flopping. There's like a glitch in in the the genetic way of things to where oh this is supposed to be you know this and and it's not and and that's because that same um, jump in the chromosomes took took place but just on the other end of it. Um, but that's that's pretty cool if that did happen. Yeah, I gotta. I'll, I'm gonna try to probe for the first time in the coming weeks, and that'll be definitely one that I probe to make sure that it's a female. Yeah, and I I had called before, right before the show here today. Um, I had called Kevin McCurley, but I was on hold at Nerd for half an hour. <laughs> they told me he was really busy, and I was like, oh, I'll wait. But I had some questions for him about coral glow and banana that I wasn't able to get answered because I couldn't get them on the, on the phone. Not everything worked out for me time-wise, but um, Will Slow had hatched the first banana in 2003 after having imported one. And Kevin McCurley, from what I could find, hatched the, the first coral glow line in um, 2002 after having, um, I believe first, having imported his, um, well, Coral Glow from, from the wild. And I remember when I had the Barker's book, there's this huge, thick, white book. It's like essentially the Bible of, at the time, of ball python info and pictures. And there was a uh, Coral Glow in there. And it was just so beautiful. It was like the most radically wild and different ball python that I had had ever seen before and I'm thinking to myself when I'm staring at that picture late at night like I'll never have one of those there's, there's only there's only one it's gonna take forever and it's gonna be so expensive and I'm not gonna get one and and you know now I mean now we have bananas and they're you know a hundred few hundred dollars depending on the combos um but uh it was originally termed a white smoke so that's mm -hmm. what I knew as I came back to the hobby of oh, bananas and coral glows. Um, so, so the names kind of evolved over time. And I wanted to ask Kevin about that. Did he term it white smoke from all the white that was on it and all the speckling? And um, why did that name go away? Um, but again, I didn't quite get him on the phone, but um yeah, it's an interesting story, the banana ball python. And and I, I think still to this day, they're super pretty. And Definitely. the more, more we mix other genes in with them, like um, neat things are happening. So um, I, I think I like the the morph like more and more and more. I'm, I'm a huge lover of banana and I got a lot of it in my collection. Another story about it, I remember... I think it was Ralph Davis. I'm not entirely sure, but when that original banana was being shopped around, there were breeders turning it down because of the speckles on it. They saw this white snake with a bunch of mites on it. And you know, those, those that did take that risk and they, they made out with that money because yeah. Yeah. Natalie likes pretty things and she's a, she's an artist and she has a good, good eye for things that, that look good. She's always creating stuff. Um, but she is not wild about bananas. She doesn't like the black speckling on them. And she thinks that they look like hobos. She calls them homeless snakes. <laughs> so when I have one that doesn't have, um, black, flecking on it then um I'm I'm hopeful that maybe like the hypo one I have I used to have one that was like a, a mota banana which was pretty much another version of fire but um potentially like and seemingly like brighter than all the other lines of fire that are out there and he had no black spots on him and I sold him uh, last last summer I think um, real pretty snake and in the long run it would have been cool to make fireflies with him and and um, test that out see see how bright he stayed 
Uh, you don't see a lot of that that fire line out there. But um, yeah, some people like bananas and some people don't. Some people don't like the the black speckling. And and I'm sure you've seen, and other viewers have seen, some bananas will just be like. <sighs> It's like you took charcoal dust and just threw it on them. Like they're so black, it flecked. It's it's crazy. And some of them even turn like gray. Like they have no yellow and orange left. They almost like they almost like look exanthic. So a lot of variability that's still um, there to be played with. I think. Okay, so we've got a. A good intro to these controversial names, banana and coral glow, huge arguments about it in the past. And the ones we're going to bring up now are in the mainstream right now. And let's talk first about leopard versus carnivore. Now, carnivore was brought up by a breeder in Europe. And this particular breeder, he has renamed different genes before. I know it's kind of upset the community. I completely respect the breeder. I watch his videos and everything, but I don't know if that's his plan to maybe take some common morphs and rename them and sell them for thousands of dollars or more. If mm -hmm. he's doing that, you know, that's, that's kind of not fair. I know the bolt was the bolt, which is supposedly a wobble spider was also created by them. And a lot of people believe that the carnivore is the same thing as a leopard. And I went on Morph Market to see that examples of the carnivore. There was, weren't any single genes to compare, but there was a carnivore clown. And as we can see for these pictures here, they look pretty much identical. Any thoughts on carnivore and leopard? Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of leopard um, in my possession. I have had a couple snakes, some that I gave away when I got that collection. Um, sometimes I like the look of leopard. It does really cool things, especially when in combo with, with other genes, you know, yellow belly and pastel. It can do some, some really cool stuff. And I've seen a variety of of different leopard versions of different things and and been like wow that snake is awesome and leopard is what what helped create that look that's so cool yeah i could totally tell why people like leopard and and want to mix that in with stuff and i remember i uh, like a year and a half ago i drove out to bakersfield and picked up a rack from from a young uh, couple that that breed snakes and and they were really nice and I, I picked up this rack and they they showed me their freedom breeder and a bunch of stuff and I'm like you know having fun checking stuff out and and they had a bunch of leopard babies that were like het clown and different things and I was like oh wow these are like really pretty so this is why people like leopard so much so these look great but in the time since then I've seen lots of older leopards that um just don't do it for me personally at, at all. They get really dark, which you would think that I would like, but they just, uh, I just, I just find them to be kind of drab. And then there's other ones that you'll see other examples um, in other people's collections. And you're like, wow, this snake is really bright. Wow. This snake has got this interesting pattern that doesn't look like a normal leopard. And I think there's been a lot of talk about there being separate lines of leopard and maybe carnivore is just one of those. I've even heard people say that they, they believe there's three distinct, somewhat different lines of leopard that do similar things. How you could tell, <laughs> visual, like, I, I don't know, you know, that's, that's something for, you know, Charlie and Ben. And, and their shed testing uh, diagnostics. But I do know that I saw a, a whole collection recently and there was a snake in there in Southern California that was like, gosh, probably like 4,000 plus grams. Like she was huge and she was leopard. And I believe she was like het albino. And she was just amazing. Not only just was she like a huge tank of a snake, 
but she just didn't look like a regular leopard at all. Like you could tell she was leopard, but she just looked cooler. And, you know, sometimes that's selective breeding. Sometimes that's like, um, you know, hidden het influence and um, the, you know, time will tell on what's going on with leopard and carnivore. Um, just from that photo that you're, you pulled up right there, I mean, those snakes look the same. They look like leopard clowns. <laughs> so I, I'm not seeing really anything from carnivore that tells me that it's different than leopard, but I, I don't have enough experience and, and data and seen enough specimens to know, um, nor do I even just have much regular leopard in my own collection to form any kind of uh, opinion on that. I mean, I have a, I have a leopard pied female, but you can barely tell that she, she's leopard and you can get a sense from it. But, uh, you know, visually she doesn't look like, like a leopard. And then I have one leopard left from that collection. That's a young female and she's really dark and she's a crazy eater. She's almost a little bit grumpy. I don't know what I'm going to do with her, but, um, yeah, I, I don't really, uh, I'm not opposed to leopard, but I, I don't, I'm not seeking it out and it doesn't really do it for me. And I've seen lots of cool ones out there too. Some people, some people love it. And then there's a whole talk about, is there a super leopard or not? Is there a super pinstripe or not? And maybe, maybe there is, but if there's a super pinstripe and if there's a super leopard that there's not a really a visual way easily of looking at it and knowing just just from that so yeah other other quirky traits there yeah i i hatched a ton of leopards last year and just the variability from one individual to the next and or, i don't know i know um garrick de meyer bought into carnivore so he must see a difference. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the biggest breeders out there. But there comes a point where if they look so similar and there's thousands of dollars of difference between the two morphs, why not just go for the cheaper one? But that's what we're here to find out. Hopefully we're well, I, I, I have noticed like with some of the stuff that he's shown in videos and in, in pictures that um, see like the top of that clown on the right where it has like a little break in the saddle at the top like like a near near the tail mm -hmm. like yeah. the, they tend to have like and you'll see this sometimes with clowns that have a whole bunch of hidden traits and in recessive things and different things you know under the hood that they'll they'll on their dorsal they'll have like something that seems a little bit different like they'll have these little like openings and little breaks and and little like you know reverse spotting and his and his collection from what i've seen you know i haven't seen him in person but from what i've seen in videos and and uh in in pictures and i was in his uh patreon for a while and saw some carnivore stuff like they um they there there does seem to be a little slight variance from what you'll normally see but is it just another line of leopard <laughs> like probably mark probably we don't have the like the definitive answer on that yet and if garrick is you know investing in it and working with it on his own that's because that's what you got to really do is like prove something out for yourself work work on something trial and error and form your own opinion based off what you see and and he sees something in it so um again time 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 will tell definitely okay let's get on to the next one this one is nanny versus carnage okay so nanny i'm in the, i'm in the nanny project here and the reason i got into the nanny is because of royal genetic reptiles who's out of puerto rico he was featured on gosh, um, Dave Kaufman's YouTube, and I, he showed some amazing nannies. And I was like, you know what? I got to get me a nanny. And I bought into it. And I made some incredible Desert Ghost nannies this past season. And 
I remember scrolling on Instagram one day and it's like, they're changing the name from Nanny to Carnage. I was like, what? When did that happen? And apparently there was a Facebook group, the Nanny Facebook group. And when I bought into Nanny, I actually searched for a Facebook group on Nanny and I couldn't find it. And I joined the Grim group, which is also another granite type gene, just to get ideas on how this morph combines with others. And after I, I found that Nanny group, I did join it and saw that they had a vote to change the name to Carnage. <clears throat> and on obviously the Nanny name is, it's probably not the best name and it is a detriment to the actual morph itself. And Carnage, it sounds cooler, but <laughs> with, with the morph that's been around for 10 plus years and people that have bought into it, is that acceptable for everyone? I think that should have been a vote that was brought up to everybody and not strictly to that that nanny group. Have you done any research on on this particular name? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough logistic. Like there's 8 billion people on this planet. They all have their own, you know, uh, opinions and differences and to try to attempt to get <laughs> with some sort of like fairness and normalcy the whole reptile hobby at least the ball python section of it to agree to a new name like that's i mean you know, we'd also like to see world peace right everybody wants that <laughs> that makes sense right but that's not going to happen um so yeah it, it's it's a difficult one it's almost like you just have to play it out like if if you have a ton of nanny or you're in a facebook group or you're in a certain section of the hobby with a bunch of people that have made some really awesome like nanny stuff and you want to change the name to make it cooler um like you're just gonna have to just do it and the 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 winning name will will win out in time in the long run um just just from majority and just from like um just bullying your way through the name part of it like uh i i don't know i don't really like the name nanny i mean it might as well be babysitter <laughs> the babysitter gene like but um that's what it has been for so long so you know people get to name things what they want when when they import something and then they create more of it and prove it out um that's kind of how it works like if somebody finds a new you know poison dart frog in the amazon and it's the only one ever you know documented they get to name it <laughs> and they can name it what the the babysitter frog if they want and that's what its name will be and then maybe if people don't like that they'll come up with different common names for it uh, not that that would be a common frog but um yeah i think nanny kind of wins out for a while because that's what it's been so there's there's a lot of confusion uh literally and figuratively like you know confusion and and uh and acid and static you know like eventually it'll all kind of play out and people same thing like we were talking earlier with coral glow and banana like eventually one day decades from now they'll probably all just be called bananas it it's a cuter name it makes more sense uh it's more widely accepted and the people that strictly keep th their lines you know known and documented and and pure in a sense we'll have coral glows but um yeah we'll just have to again give give it more time and and see as far as like the traits and the visual like aspects to nanny it doesn't seem like there's any uh known health uh detrimental things to it um it looks similar to you know grim and paint and to, to varying degrees you know some of those granity genes that break up stuff especially if you put nanny into like a bell complex you're gonna see immediately that it has that included uh, with what it's got going on and i've seen some really cool uh nannies and um i wouldn't mind working with the gene i just i just don't have any i haven't really 
focused on it, but I, I sometimes see, see ones that are just like, eh, whatever. And then I see ones that are just super awesome. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to work with it, but not, not at this, this moment. And, and as long as you keep working with it, I think you'll make some really cool things too, with really cool patterns on the side, broken up with all the different things that you have, uh, your disposal. Okay. So just checking Morphopedia here on Morph Market. They actually bring up the, the controversy that happened last year. Let me read this real quick. It says in 2023, a handful of sellers requested that the nanny gene be rebranded re as carnage in an attempt to make the trait more desirable, which was overwhelmingly rejected by the community on the grounds of confusion. Given that nanny is by far the most popular granite line gene. However, a small portion of sellers have continued to use the name carnage to advertise their nanny animals. So I think the Morphopedia is pretty cool in that they brought that up. And they actually yeah. here in the description under the alias, is wrote carnage as well <laughs> i don't know what this dirty part is yeah you know what that dirty part here means i folks? don't i don't uh you're just, you're gonna have to wash your hands after you click that button <laughs> <laughs> one more thing here about the the first produced by this this is completely off the the subject here but recently on blue line morph's latest video he was he bought a double head clown pied that he thinks didn't prove out and was kind of accusing this particular seller of selling fake heads. So I just thought that was interesting how it tied into our, our nanny subject, but this was the originator of the nanny. From what I heard that he named the morph after his grandma, which is a cute thing. Yeah. But I don't know whether that's true or not, but yeah, it's, I don't, I don't, uh, I've never had dialogue with, uh, with that seller. Um, I've seen some of their stuff. I recognize the name vaguely, but, um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about that. I do know that in the history of reptile keeping with all the different genes and different species, you know, hets back in the day was, was impossible hets was how you could get affordably involved into a project and it, it really is important in a world of capitalism with a lot of you know a lot of greed and 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 the world runs on on money and currency like you you gotta you know it's best to buy from people that you build trust with you know i see aaron from beast morphs in here and leviathan snakes was in here people that put themselves out and build a, a, a reputation with what we now have social media to do so with like, and, and at shows and word of mouth, like the people that are doing like honorable and respectable things in the hobby are the people that you should spend your money with. Um, that's, that's really something I've, I've always felt. There's plenty of, animals and and deals and trades and things that i nixed in in years past where i just didn't feel feel comfortable with with every aspect of it and at the same time sometimes you got to give people people a chance and and i love getting stuff from from new breeders or, or selling to new breeders and making making friends and um you know um but it is really important to research your pur purchases, buy smart, and you know, associate and do business with with people that are good and friendly, and um, and trustworthy. So, you Definitely. know, I will say that. <clears throat> okay, let's get to the one that. You know, since I posted this on Instagram, I've, I've been getting messages and comments about this particular morph. And in fact, I had someone that wanted to come on today and share off their zebras. And just mm -hmm. to announce here, next week we will have Sculpted Exotics as our first guest. And they'll be sharing off some zebras with us to, to show us how much better it is than Mackenzie, right? So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see with some 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 visuals. Um, I've seen that person posting on Instagram lately. 
like a whole bunch of stuff and they sent me a friend request and I checked out some of their their social media I believe they're in Arizona um and have some pretty cool stuff so um yeah I guess we'll we'll have them on get to know get to know them okay so the zebra gene is like one of the hottest recessives it was brought up in in justin's top five and i've always loved it but of course it was way too expensive for me and recently at, it was brought up that mckenzie is very similar super mckenzie is very similar to zebra so i, I looked up super mckenzie's and mckenzie's online and i bought into it i got myself a a GHI Mojave Super McKenzie, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This pictures I have here on the left we have a zebra, and on the right we have a Super McKenzie. Now, CR Serpents actually commented on my post that he's the owner of the Super McKenzie, which is the one on the right here, and he said that it actually has yellow belly or spark in it, which is why it looks so much more different than. The zebra on the left. Mm -hmm. now, I, I gotta admit that I did want to pick a zebra that looked kind of like in the same position as the Super Mc Super McKenzie to compare. I know Adam Chelsea, he has some wonderful zebras and he had beautiful pictures of them, but he had them outdoors and it was a different lighting and stuff. And I kind of wanted to get that similar thing here. Now what do you know about Zebra and Mackenzie? Well, we've talked about it recently a little bit in some of the, the past videos. I I don't know a ton about Zebra. Um, I just know that the snakes are not black and white unless you add Exanthic. <laughs> so, it's like, uh, I, I, but I understand, like, you know, it's banding uh, that it does. Um, almost like in a way that cryptic animals uh, and het cryptic animals, they tend to want to band a bit. And there's a lot of other species of reptiles, uh, of snakes that you'll see as you selectively breed over time that certain snakes that have oscillated patterns or circles and different things, like you can breed for an animal being banded. Um, and you can breed away for it, just like in the case with king snakes over the decades. But um, that seems to be what zebras do a lot. Um, a lot of banding, a lot of interesting, you know, almost like side stripiness um, over the top. I, I just, the price tag on it for me, um, as you're seeing all these investment quality animals during during this boom that we've had, like it just didn't make sense for me. I, I feel it's it's overpriced, honestly. And I, I it's just like big boy stuff. I I, I don't I don't need to uh, play play with that. You know, a, a lot of genes they come down in price over time, the more that are created. And it might be that the more zebras, since it's it's a recessive and it's taking a while and they're expensive and that's why like it they'll 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 come down in price and be more attainable and then that might uh if they continue to prove to be really neat looking in combos like generate even more hype and there might be a whole second wind with zebra where people start to get into it because they're seeing how cool it is and it's all of a sudden becoming affordable kind of like how i feel about stranger it, um you know, Stranger's r really pretty gene. It does cool, fun stuff. Um, but I just feel like it's going to come down in price. And the more that it comes down in price, like the more attainable it is. So other people can now work with Stranger. You recently bought a Stranger. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, and, and, and other people I know have recently uh, acquired that gene. And um, and that's cool. It's, it's going to be a fun one to play with. I'm still just not not ready for uh, pulling the trigger on that. Although I do look at it a little bit more closely now because it is more obtainable. But I think that's what it's going to take, you know, for zebra to be a big, super popular gene, like a number 
five or four or whatever it was on, you know, Justin Kabilka's list, like it's going to take the price point coming down to where people can play with it. And, and, and it just, it just doesn't really draw me as much as it does. Um, some people, I, I look at it as more as people are like, I want something that's rare. And that's, that's always been the case with reptiles since um, before I came in the hobby and when I came in the hobby and forever in the future. Like people want things that uh, are not easy to acquire and not everybody else has, you know. Um, so I think it's going to take some time for Zebra. Let's take a look at the Het Zebra versus just the regular Mackenzie. And Mackenzie on the left here, Het Zebra on the right. Now, it's interesting because how can you label something an incomplete dominant and something a recessive? I know with things like Monsoon and Pied, you could put a bunch of them in a box and pick them out with tracks and everything else, but still some that you don't pick out will end up being Het Pied and hit monsoon, and that's why they keep them as hets. The question is, if you put some het zebras in a box, can you pick out those het zebras? I mean, comparing these two, you have a lot of banding occurring with them. I, I know Justin brings out incomplete dominance as when they have both genes, it ends up doubling the look of it. And that's kind of what happens here with Super Mackenzie and Zebra. But man, it's... Um, we're just going to have to wait for a genetic test on this. And I really cannot wait for Sculpted Exotics next week to show off some zebras. Las Vegas Ball Pythons, in his comment on my post, he mentioned that the zebras are more graneted, whereas the Mackenzie's are really clean. And I kind of looking through C Super Mackenzie's and zebras, I, I do agree with that comment. So maybe it comes to that point where we're talking about leopards and how may it just be a different line of it. But then again, is it worth more, much more than the other? Yeah, and it could be that they land on different alleles and that genetically, technically, they're different, but they're, they act very similarly. Like how many different like uh, lines and versions of uh, like T positive albino are there? Like there's a million. I don't know if I can even keep track now because there's new ones. Um, it might be something like that. Um, I definitely have seen, I will say, uh, some really cool looking Mackenzie's. And I've seen some that are just like, eh, whatever, it's cool, but it's not like wowing me. But um, I, I think that was smart for you to get a Mackenzie and, and find out for yourself. Just, just breed it and see, and see what happens and, you know, take notes and, um, I think they'll be. We'll see more and more um, hatchlings from both genes um, this year and next year, and we'll we'll f be able to better form an opinion and a preference uh, over time. Will Telehit here says is Striker included in this, and Striker is another <laughs> one very similar to Zebra. CR very similar. Commented on my post that he has both Zebra, or I'm sorry. Mackenzie and Stryker, and he says they're identical. So it's definitely another one to take into consideration here. Stryker, again, one of those genes that when like just in its single form, it, it's really expensive, but um, doesn't really do a whole lot for me. You can barely tell that there's something going on there a lot of times, unless you know. But a, a super striker, a super striker yellow belly, like you could tell cool things are, are possible there. And, um, you know, it, it, it is kind of in that similar realm. Like you could discuss striker in the same uh, topic, I feel. I know there's a lot more that we could cover here. Calico sugar was brought up and I, I got calico and I know that it, it brings a lot of orange and has less of the white on the pattern. And sugar really just whitens out mm -hmm. the alien heads. That's another topic we could get into, but we are not going to get into that today. I think we're just about done here. We've met our hour quota. And just a reminder, next week we will have 
Sculpted Exotics joining us, and they're going to be sharing off some of those beautiful zebras that they have. Mm -hmm. Any final words here, Jason? Uh, just that we didn't have a show last week. <laughs> we both had uh, flat tires on the day of the show, or the odds of that. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I was able to get mine resolved. Um, yours ate into your day a little bit more. So sorry, everybody, for that. It's um, something that was out of our control. We're attempting to um, uh, have the show uh, with with consist consistency, and uh, that's the intent there. So sorry for anybody that missed us last week. Uh, I missed doing it, and here we are doing it again. And we will see you guys next Friday, where we'll be a little bit more caught up with some of our stuff, and we'll have a new topic. And uh, and then I'll do the giveaway next next week. So another slight delay on that with some of the reptile crew apparel. We'll we'll do that next week, and we'll have another problem of week and all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys then. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Jason, you're awesome. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night.